Hey, what's going on guys? Rudalinal here, and today we're looking at some more Python. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you something called data types. Now, whenever you're programming or you're, you've submerged yourself in the world of computer science, you're going to be understanding and looking at information in ways that we call data types. Now, these data types can be numbers, they can be values like true or false, like yes or no, that sort of thing. They can be text, like um, they could be a whole sentence, like uh, my name is John, how about that? Um, or whatever the user inputted, like trying to input information to the program. It doesn't matter. It's all these sort of things that we have to be able to manipulate in a program. In Python, it's really easy. Uh, I'm going to get idle fired up. You can do the same. And let's start looking at some of these. So if we start off in numbers and integers, integers are just whole numbers. I'm sure you've heard that term in like math or science or anything. But yeah, they can be negative numbers, they can be zero, and they can be positive numbers. Uh, so if you just type in a negative 49, I don't care, uh, you can have a nine. There you go, it works. You can have zero, and boom. <laughs> now, floats are like decimals or a sort of manipulation of fractions. These can be, I think the terminology is, terminology actually, is sometimes either floats or doubles. I, don't, I myself don't know too much of the difference. It's always been a little foggy in my mind, so it's not really my place to be teaching this. <laughs> but uh, take my word for it, you can have a negative 3.14, there you go, anything that has a decimal point, anything that has a floating point value and that sort of thing. Uh, you can have it in zero too, you can have zero whatever you want, boom. <laughs> and then you can have, let's say, 7.0. You don't even have to have a value after that decimal. As long as you have that decimal in there, it's going to interpret it as a float or, or a double. So, Now, Booleans, Booleans are a whole other story. These are, these are for things like yes or no questions or sometimes, or like if something is this or if they're doing that. And it's, it's kind of an interesting way to think about it sometimes. So if you can have, you can have true which means something like is happening. It's it's true, obviously, and you can hit that in, it's true, and you can use uh, false, which is that same way. Now, in Python, the syntax does have a capital letter. You could just type in true, but it'll interpret that the wrong way. It'll think it's a variable or something else. That, but we'll go into that in more detail later in another tutorial. The same with um, more in-depth stuff with integers and floats and booleans, because <clears throat> the way data is processed for each language is obviously kind of different, and the way you can manipulate data is different entirely for each language. Like, in, in the world of C or C++, you can have unsigned or signed integers, which really determine whether or not the number is positive or not. You can look at the size of the number in memory. You can look at how much... What, what your limits are and how big the integer can be. You can have, like, numbers up to 32,749. I have no idea. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head. But in Python, I don't think you're ever going to have to worry about that just because it's so minimalistic for the better. It's, it's kind of grand and elegant in that way. So, but back on topic, Booleans are true and false. Uh, I... You'll most likely use these a lot. I know I do if you're just going to be checking for things back and forth, which is kind of a good idea. <laughs> but now, uh, moving on to text. Um, these are kind of an interesting subject. There's a lot of information to be able to give out with these. There's a lot to teach, anyway. So, strings, first of all, uh, can be in uh, double quotations or or single quotations. Now, whenever you type something at the Python interpreter, it's always going to return it to you um, in those single quotations. If you were to type in print and then have your, your string, there you go, it does that exact same thing, but it does not have those surrounding quotation marks because it's actually displaying output to you. And that's something crucial that we'll have to be talking about in a later video. But, yeah, I mean, <laughs> so now that you have those strings, if you look at it, Strings are really just a mass of text. They're tons of characters or single pieces of information. You can have like A, you could have a single space, you could even have a number or symbol, and that's all a string is made up of. It's just a ton. It's almost like a list for all these things. And there you go. <laughs> now, these things may seem a little primitive. <laughs> I think that's the best word for it right now, because because we're not doing much with it, I'm just introducing these, these things to you, these data types. 
you think you would know, okay, uh, this is a string. Yeah? So what? That's a string. What do I care? <laughs> what you're learning now, though, what I'm trying to introduce to you and show you guys, what I'm trying to present to you, is the fundamentals of what you're going to be using. Because you can't have a program without these sort of things. So showing it these, showing these things to you in their, in like the bare essentials, having only numbers and floating point numbers and that sort of thing, this this might seem incredibly useless at first, but once we go more in depth with this, once we build on top of it, you will have such a greater understanding, and hopefully you will know how it works at the smallest level it can be. So here are your data types. Um, I'm going to have to jump back and forth to this topic just because data types are such a crucial thing, and Python interprets them in a really interesting and fascinating way, but for now, all you have to worry about are these sort of things. You have numbers, you have text, and that's all you have to worry about, and you're going to be able to manipulate those in your program in a really magnificent way. So, yeah, <laughs> that's all I have for you today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope this helped. Um, I'll be sure be sure to check me out in the next upcoming tutorials because we're going to get more in depth with data types, numbers, yada yada yada, and being able to actually write some Python code because I'm sure that's that's really what you're trying to do here. It's what you're dying to do. Just type out some symbols and some keywords and get to get to running your scripts. But uh, thanks again, guys. See you again. Bye.